Okay, ladies and gents, welcome back to the workshop where we are now on uh, part six of the radio control banjo plane. Uh, this plane has been taken out of uh, the RC m &E magazine on uh, one of their free plans that was uh, about a couple of months ago. Um, if you've watched the last video, you'll see that we've transferred all the drawing onto the balsa wood and uh, we were about to cut the parts out. Well, I've managed to do that now, so I'd just like to take you through that <clears throat> and uh, show you an update of where I've got to. So if I just turn the, the camera around, you can see that I've cut out the balsa wood sides out of uh, one eighth balsa wood and I've cut it to the line. What I actually did was to put two pieces of balsa wood together and pin them um, and then uh, obviously I could cut through the two to make the two sides so um, I cut just proud of the line and then I used my uh, permagrit sanding block um, and just went round the edge Oops, like so just to square the edges up and make it uh, nice and neat to the line once I'd uh, bandsawed it all out and sanded it and was happy with it, I then transferred um, with pen exactly where the F2 and F3 formers are going to go onto the edges there and there. I did that also on the top as well. Now, the thing to do is open the sides up like a book. So you've got two opposite sides. Always make sure that you are building two opposite sides. In other words, you have a right-hand version and a left-hand version. Obviously, on the drawing, there's only one hand shown. So the reason I say that is I've seen countless times builders have actually made two right-hand sides or, you know, uh, it happens a lot on wings where... A wing is drawn just uh, one panel, say a left wing or a right wing on the drawing and the builder has gone ahead and uh, actually made two right hand wings. Uh, obviously he's in trouble then when he comes to join it. Um, so set them up like that as an open book and then you can't go wrong. Uh, as you can see, I've also cut out uh, the formers uh, for the aeroplane. This one being uh, one eighth ply, that's F1. That, that is your bulkhead or your firewall, as some people call it. Um, next is uh, F2, uh, that's quarter balsa, and it's also reinforced on the reverse side with uh, quarter stick balsa. Same again with uh, former three. Um, it's basically cut out a quarter balsa and then it's framed all the way round. Well, it isn't actually framed all the way round on the drawing, but I have just to give it a bit of belt and braces and um, just to give it a little bit more strength. So um, moving on to F4, which is the very tail end of the aircraft only a small piece of balsa. And also that is the rudder. Now I've managed to get all these parts um as you can see these are the strengtheners or the doublers as a lot of people call them uh these are all out of the scrap that was left over from making the wing this is 3 16th uh balsa so i've got loads of scrap bits here and there so uh i've taken them out of there to save uh, obviously using a new sheet so Looking back at the fuse large sides, what I've done is after marking them on the edge, I've then transferred the marks with a, a ballpoint pen straight away across the fuse large so we can see exactly where these parts fit. If I take um, F3, which is here, and stand it up on the lines that I've uh, scribed, you can see exactly where I'm coming from. Then I've also cut out the doublers and uh, marked them up. There you go. One, one. That will go there. Taking note with the doublers that there's now a change in direction 
of grain. Obviously, the grain for the sides uh, go down the length. The grains for the doublers go vertically up and down. So just be aware of that. That will give sort of maximum strength. Um, if I get the next doubler, which I've cut out there, that will sort of go there. Then the next will go alongside it like that. Then we have the next former, which is F2. That will go like, oops, like so. So now you can see how it's coming together. All that's got to be glued. Uh, one very important part I'd just like to mention here before we move on is uh, the importance of getting these formers at 90 degrees to the sides of the fuselage. That is an absolute must. If you've got them on an angle, a crosswords like this, a few degrees, when you put the other side onto the top, obviously you're going to get misalignment. So it's absolutely critical that you get these at 90 degrees. The way I do that, actually, is obviously I put the glue around the joint and then I've got a ground glass block that I use as a square and I'll put that up against the side like so and let that go off and that'll be a perfect 90 degrees you can do that with an engineer engineer square or your permagrit um, sanding block that can go against it like so and that will give a nice 90 degree. You, you get the picture. So um, that's something to be aware of. So that's about it for this video. Uh, oh, apart from F1. Yes, I did, uh, I did tell you that there was a mistake made on that. And there is. I'll show you. Where, if you get the actual drawing, it measures 60 millimetres wide, which is what I've cut my piece to like so 60 mil you think ah all good when you get the top view of the drawing wherever i've put that which is here oops i have to excuse me i'm trying to do everything one-handed uh f1 actually measures from there to there 70 mil so the 10 mil out on the width um i think the where they've made the mistake they've actually measured it from inside to inside which is 60 obviously that's wrong it goes to the outside okay so that's a piece that i've got to recut not a problem really so okay that's it for part six of the video um, please subscribe if you find it interesting and you want to follow the series. Uh, subscribe and I hope to see you soon. Bye.